So what is going on guys, it's your boy Nistro here, and today we are going to be covering Infernoids. Um, Infernoids have, they used to be, you know, pretty popping back in the day as, as like a mill dot deck for the longest time once those cards like Grass Got Greener and Fairy Tale Snow got banned, it's been a lot harder for them to keep up in the meta. Thanks to cards like Void Imagination and Infernoid Deviati, the deck can still make a pretty strong board going second. They can basically mill um, all their best Infernoids and then uh, summon a monster like Deviati, which can both clear all spell traps on the field and negate a monster effect in the same chain link, which is kind of broke. In 2023, they have a, a access to a card like Layer of Darkness, which allows them to tribute monsters your opponent controls to activate their effects. And so every Infernoid has a quick effect that requires a monster to be tributed. So basically, Layer of Darkness once per turn allows you to get rid of a monster on your opponent's field regardless of if it's unaffected by card effects or whatever conditions it may have. There is no monster that is untouchable by Layer of Darkness unless it is unaffected by card effects and it's not a dark type. I'm moving different. This shit ain't nothing to me, man. Which, uh, Chaos Angel is still dark, and I think that's like the best unaffected by card effects monster at the moment. Coming into Age of Overlord, the uh, Snake Eye package really helps this deck a lot because Snake Eye Ash can get you access to Decatron, and then you can actually loop Decatron multiple times, maybe about four or five times in the turn, depending on your build. Um, and Decatron can do a lot of things. It can level manipulate to make uh, synchros. It can become a negate. It can set up your graveyard to um, l let you play with, um, to let you play out your graveyard. So it does a lot of things at once, and it's a really interesting what this deck can do now, per se. Looking a bit ahead into the future, the OCG, they may not be as heavy on the Snake Eye package, but the Terminal World stuff is going to be coming out next year for us in TCG. And um, it does look like Infernoid is going to start doing a little better in, in the format once uh, the, the Terminal World stuff comes out. So just a fair warning, if you're not someone who plays Infernoid, uh, you might want to start learning the matchup, learning the ins and outs of what the deck does because because first off, any deck that can utilize the Simple Spoils package is immediately getting a boost um, just to it existing. <laughs> um, and then, you know, thanks to Bonfire and Snake Eye Populous coming out next year, which although aren't in this list because this is more of a mill dot deck list than, than a combo list, are still two very significant cards that um, you should be looking out for because those will only make Snake Eye builds more consistent. The build that I came up with here is more for TCG. It's not as crazy on the combo side. Um, you're, you're not going into the Bish Balkan stuff, although I will showcase like all the potential of combos. I, I want to show a more mid-range kind of Infernoid um, plays you can make going first. And then I also want to show what the deck can do going second, assuming that you open Void Imagination, or even if you open a card like a Layer of Darkness, right? So this is a build right here that's more tailored for going second, while uh, this one, I think, with Bish Balkan, Calamity, um, Anima, and Link Rebo, this is a more like going first or second kind of build, simply because of the ability to make Synchros with uh, Decatron. It's just way too strong. I don't really play this deck, so I'm still flip floppy on whether I like Bish Balkan in the deck or not, because as cool as Calamity is, and as neat as it is that you can get follow up if you play the, you know, if you play your rounds correct, or if you play your turns correctly, if you set up correctly on your first turn, it still feels like a bit of a glass cannon. And so I want to have a deck that's a little more resilient. Also, yeah, uh, there's very little space for hand traps in a deck like this, especially if you're committing to like the Void Imaginations and like Layer of Darknesses, like maybe you can cut down on these, but these are so good. So I figured more cards like Drop with Fenrir's, maybe even Tactics could be a good uh, place in this build. Anunku and Deviati do carry a lot. And so you really just have to make sure Imagination can actually just resolve and then you kind of just get the game from there. It doesn't even matter if Tierra resolves or not. Once Imagination resolves, you can get so much card advantage just playing through stuff with Anunku and uh, Deviati. If you want to play a little more sweaty, like if you want to play like a going first heavy build, um, you can like take out the Fenrir's and the Pankatrops. Um, you could side out the Droplets and then play more like Hand Traps and going first cards and you can side out the triple imagination because these are strictly for going second until the new infernoid support comes out so that's like 
that's th that's nine slots for non-engine that you could be playing and you could side with the void banishments as well i know some people like void feast i'm not the biggest fan of that card because you have to open void banishment for that card to be useful which and there's no real way to search void banishment at the moment with uh the current engine so i i think like you could side out banishment as well so that's that's not just nine that's like 11 not non-engine slots that, that could be swapped for hand traps right um let me just consolidate all of them right here uh so this could be nibiru's ashes imperms my fucking veilers drolls whatever it is that you think you need maybe even like taking out some layer of darknesses uh triple tactics well whatever it is that you think you need this is all your space to sort of like swap that out and so because it has a decent amount of space for non-engine i think like this get th this deck if you play the combo variant could do pretty well and even if you play a low to the ground variant i think if you play like enough um card like if you know when to stop your opponent i feel like it could be really really good let's uh go through some replays some combo videos Let's look at some uh, wanted poster combo, and so this is really just a 1.5 card combo where um, they can set up not just uh, the in Inferno chip, but also with the Snake Eye stuff, you know, they can set up a little follow-up. I don't think there are any one-card combos in this deck, like, uh, assuming that you don't consider wanted a one card combo I, I don't i consider wanted a two card combo uh personally so i don't think there are any one card combos in this deck but this is just making the most out of what we can so this is just a basic uh decatron loop right so you get ash you get decatron you mill one and then you use ash send a decatron summon oak revive you you mill a second one and then you can go for flameberg and so I kind of like doing this because uh, you can banish the Decatron here and then you can uh, put the Oak in, in the Spawn Trap Zone. You can get the draw. And this is a very like low to the ground kind of play. And this is like the kind of play where you would want to have more hand traps. So like maybe if you're going first, you side in more disruptions for things and going second maybe is where you uh, play more uh, balls to the wall kind of a build. So what this allows you to do here is this allows you to um, go for Oak, right? Oak can bring back the Decatron even from the Banished Pile, which allows Decatron to basically be banished for the Infernoid monsters and to still be follow-up, like which is kind of crazy. And then Decatron, you know, because we sent Deviati, Decatron can tribute itself and then banish, um, in, negate and banish something. And then we can use a card like a Tondel, which is a quick effect, tribute the Flameberg. Flameberg can then summon back the Decatron, summon back the Ash. And now we get another mill for a spell and trap negate, and we get follow up, and we get um, basically enough Infernoids in our graveyard to summon either Deviati or a Anunku next turn. We could pivot between both once we. Um, go next turn, right? Because we have Decatron on field, Decatron in hand, uh, original Simple Spool, so that's access to another Decatron from deck. And, yeah. Um, also, this was, I, I was playing double Snake Eye at this point because I felt like, um, this deck needs to see the Snake Eye stuff. Like, straight up, you kind of, you may want to double up on some of your ratios like you may want to play double diabelle star or double snake eye stuff just to make sure you can like get access to it because if you don't get access to the snake eye stuff it's very unlikely that you'll be making a board going first um going second again you have void imagination so it's not as important but going first you may want to play more copies of some of those cards now i just kind of want to play around with like what the infernoid engine can do so um this is assuming that you get like an extra infernoid that you can discard for Diabell Star or something. And this isn't leaning into the Snake Eye stuff at all. Uh, at, like, as much as we did last time. So 
So now we're going into like Axel Synchro. We go Decatron. Flameberg. And then we can we can basically have two two negates here, J just like with the other combo. Except now it's like the the the, the negates are more um, you know present on our field at the beginning of the turn. It, 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 you don't have to like go through a a bunch of hoops to like play into them. Um, again, this is like very simple stuff, very like uh, bread and butter kind of combos, like not. Not the potent, not the highest potential what the, the deck can do, but I just like feel like this is a safer way to play um, around hand traps compared to going into like fish falcon or, or stuff like that. But that's just my opinion. Um, and then I kind of want to mess around with the field spell. Um, I think field spell is both mid and good in this deck because it's mid. If you draw it without any other of the snake eye cards but if you draw it with the other snake eye cards it's good so it's kind of like a 50 50. um i personally wouldn't play this in my list but i can see why people would play it um also i i do place flameberg here because uh it gets flameberg out of deck and in case i don't open any of the um infernoid or in case I don't open any of the Snake Eye stuff, like, at least I could get a Flameberg here to maybe r revive a Decatron or something. But ultimately, you're going to have to open the Snake Eye stuff for this to be useful. So it's because we, we opened Snake Eyes that we placed um, Flameberg down. If we didn't open Snake Eye, it might be better to place something down like Ash or, or uh, Oak, just so that you can get the search um, during your opponent's turn. So, yeah. Um, also, I really like Fenrir when mixed with the Snake Eye stuff because Fenrir uh, tripping the one from hand to summon Dia Bellstar seems like it's pretty easy. Um, it's pretty good resource management because you're not losing the Fenrir that you summon. You're losing the Fenrir that might not even get played next turn for a uh, for a good, a, a really good a a extender slash combo starter. So. Uh, also, the only reason why we send uh, Dia Bellstar here is because I do kind of want to mess around with the Infernoids in the graveyard, and unfortunately, the level restriction in from the Infernoids is what kind of holds the deck back sometimes, and I can see why some people would want to lean more into, into the Snake Eye engine, but I also don't think it, it's impossible to play around. You kind of just have to know what you're doing. Um, but yeah, like I don't want to have too many levels on field um, when I'm playing with my snake eye stuff so um i sent the dia bell star summon out ash ash effect get decatron decatron mill cytomus uh go for oak oak is gonna revive decatron go harmadic and then uh i go into muckraker and so i sent the flameberg and and the oak to summon out the birch so now I kind of have um, one more way into Decatron here. We're going to go into Shooting Riser. Shooting Riser mills us any level 6 or lower Infernoid from deck to graveyard. And I usually like to either mill... Um, I usually like to mill uh, my, my level 6 to make a level 1. Or this time I build my level 4 to make a level 3. So that allows us to make a Baron. And then Baron can summon back Oak, summon back Decatron. And then, you know, from here you have a, a negate, you have a way to SP Little Knight, and you have a way to protect your stuff. You also have a potential follow up there. It's not the strongest board, but again, it's more middle of the road. Um, there's probably a lot more that you could have done, but because, like, I was more prioritizing stacking up my graveyard with Infernoids. I summoned Decatron about four times, then I went Shooting Riser, I went Excel Synchro, that's about six Inferno Monsters sent to Grave. Even if we banish two, that's still a good amount of follow-up in Grave. Um, and this one's probably going to be the weakest combo. 
again, like, this is more of, like, s finding ways to mill, um, as many Infernoids as possible. So this, this kind of combo may be more for going second, if you already have, like, all your big Infernoid names in Graveyard, and you just want to... You know, uh, like you just summon Tiara, and you have like Snake Eye stuff on in, in, in your hand. Uh, we went into Shooting Riser, into Axel Stardust to summon uh, Decatron. Mol you know, um, more than enough times to uh, get a, a good amount of Infernoids and Grave for follow up next turn. And now I want to show you guys a, a, a Bish Balkan test hand. So basically, what we're going to be doing here is this is going to be like the ceiling for Infernoid, like uh, the absolute potential, or the highest potential of what um, Infernoid can do. And so we're going to start with the Snake Eyes stuff, we're going to go to Decatron. Level here doesn't really matter for the first one. Uh, we can revive Decatron and Mill. Now, for the second summon of Decatron, it's really important that you make it level eight. So you mill side of this, you make it level eight, and then um, you use Oak and another card that isn't Decatron to summon Flameberg, so that the Flameberg and the Decatron can be used to summon Bish Balkan. And then once Flameberg is sent to graveyard, it gets to revive two Snake Eye, uh, like Decatron and another Snake Eye card from your graveyard. The only problem with uh, Bish Balkan is that it has to summon two level one fires from your graveyard. So if they like, so if they start to play DD Crow to like counter your deck, uh, that could be very significant. But uh, for now, this is a uh, it 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 is pretty free. It, it's pretty free. So now Decatron is gonna mill another, um, and we're gonna we're gonna mill Anunku to make him level eleven, so that eleven plus one equals twelve. If we like, if there were more level 12 synchros that are actually usable we could uh potentially like send crimson summon out another level 12 synchro but we're not going to be doing that now um now we get to use bish balkan effect to summon as many tokens to each side of the field and we're going to use one to go into oh shit so we're going to use one token to go into link Rebo, and then we're going to use the other two to go into ip mascarena I know you could use a second Link Karibo here, but the extra deck space is really tight in this deck, and I didn't feel like playing a second Link Karibo. Um I do feel like cards like uh, Relinquished Anima or um, p potential things like that could be good. You could go SP Little Knight. Actually, no, you can't go SP with uh, that in a token because it needs to affect monsters. Um, yeah. I guess, like... Using because you you always get the the three tokens or yeah like because you always get the three tokens I think it is always correct to go for this because um, IP allows you to pivot between Muckraker and SP Love Knight whereas going for two Link Rebels does not allow you to pivot between those those cards. Um, so we also opened up Fire Recovery, and the great thing about Fire Recovery is that it, it revives any Fire Monster from your graveyard, so you could summon Decatron, or you can go for um, the Snake Eyes Flameberg Dragon, which we milled earlier. And as I showed you guys earlier, if, if you can like summon Flame, like if you can send Flameberg to the grave during your opponent's turn, it gets you even more plus, because now you're not just um, getting an extra negate on field, you're also getting um, follow-up with Snake Eye Ash. So, we're going to get our plus one. We drew a Prosperity, which is very ironic. We could have gotten the, the Fire Recovery plus one, but I feel like it's better safe for when we start banishing our Infernoid monsters and not when uh, they're in Graveyard. So, I, I kind of wanted to keep it um, in Grave for next turn for follow-up. Now, uh, you should Crimson Dragon before main phase. I just forgot to put Chain on when I was in the playtest thing so um the crimson dragon timing here is going to be sloppy but always do crimson dragon during like standby phase or like draw phase never never wait till main phase to do crimson dragon right like you have to wait till main phase to do ip mascarina but never wait till main phase to do crimson dragon um so he has the simple spoils he has a void vanishment and, and again i should have done it on resolution 
sloppy timing on the Crimson Dragon part, but you guys get the point, right? We summon out Calamity, and uh, assuming that he had nothing else on field, we're gonna go uh, with IP Mascarina, summon out our SP. SP, we just banish something random, and then Flameberg, which actually can chain block the SP Loto Knight. So Flameberg can, ch can chain block the SP Loto Knight um, because it's two different trigger effects. So Chain Link 2 would be summoning back our two uh, level one fires, and then Chain Link 1 would be SP Loto Knight, banishing the card. Come on. And then Excel and, and uh, Decatron, so we mill Deviati, which means we get a monster negate, and we search Decatron, which means we have a follow up for next turn. Um, and looking at our board plus the uh, this how stacked our graveyard is, it, it looks like we're in a pretty good situation here. Now, even though the tokens do stay on the opponent's side of the field, because uh, you know we we had to give our opponents some advantage to play our turn properly, they could go into their own IP Mascarena plus Link Karibo if they play it, but ultimately, um, or maybe even like a Nightmare Unicorn or something if, if they have ways to play, uh, to play into that, but ultimately, most of what they won't be able to do, most of what they'll, they'll be able to do won't be useful because of King Calamity plus SP Loto Knight. Um, King Calamity is going to stop them during, um, during their turn, and then SP Loto Knight, if they try to summon something, we can just SP Loto Knight it away, and they can't really respond with much. Um, and also, like, let's say that like, we let them go into something like IP Mascarina. If they try to trigger IP Mascarina, SP Loto Knight can banish the IP before Link summons. So it's not even that big of a deal. Um, assuming that you don't want to use your Decatron um, negate on, on, on some kind of effect like that. Now, the thing is, is that, like, these guys could still attack into Decatron, and you only have one Link Rebo, like, if they're able to summon out, like, like, it, like looking at all these tokens here, like, they're they're gonna have at least two or three monsters on field, um, assuming that they can, like, Link Summon. Uh, you can expect to see, like, a Typhon on the field as well. So, because we, we summoned an immense amount of monsters from our extra deck. So just be careful about like playing around your opponent's um, big um, like extra deck plays, but ultimately they should not be able to break your board entirely. They might be able to break some of these smaller pieces, uh, like uh, Decatron or um, the Snake Eye Ash, but ultimately like these two, unless they open really broken, these two are probably going to stay on field. Uh, also, because Bitch Balkan cannot be destroyed by card effects, so. That's kind of a, 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 a thing <laughs> that happens. Um, and yeah. So basically, we we go next turn. There's no way that we lose this um, from this scenario. We can make a whole bunch of synchros like uh, Baron, and um, we can go into the Muckraker, and we can just have fun playing the game from there. I want to show you guys some replays of me playing my friend Using the going second build, I'm not, um, I wasn't using any of the crazy Bish Balkan combo bullshit. I'm like, uh, this is just to showcase what the deck can do going second, because I think that's where the deck shines. So our friend, our friend here is on the, um, invoked branded build, but whatever the hell that is. Um, so he ends on Mechaba, Super Poly, Ash, and uh, we know he has at least one monster in hand, so this is at, at the very least a monster negate, uh, an Ash, and, and a Super Poly. So we go for the Black Witch here because, first off, I knew that he would negate Black Witch because. Negating Black Witch is essentially a two for one. It's like the easiest way to bait a hand trap. If if you can afford to waste Black Witch, then it's the best thing to waste. Um, so now I activate Void Imagination, but I don't use Effect, right? So I just activate the card just to see if he has any sort of interruption for it, and he does not. So then I summon Decatron. 
to get the mill, and he ashes to Decatron, which I'm like, sure, yeah, that that's fine with me. So now we get the Void Imagination, summon out Tiara. And him super polling here, like, means absolutely nothing. If anything, he's doing our job for us by removing Ti uh, Tiara from the field. So, we milled uh, Entis, Garua, and Farajit, whereas our opponent milled Grand Guignol, Entis, and Nightmare Unicorn. <laughs> Sadly, their Entis will not be popping anything. <laughs> Um, but at least they get Grand Guignol, right? Uh, whereas we milled an extra Deviati, we, we milled a pop, we basically milled a draw and a half, and we have so much steam in our graveyard, like, there's no way that we lose this, right? So, we Entis pop the Mechaba, we draw, and then, and then we would also get Verity. So, just to show you the... Not the game two, but the game three. Um, I believe of the same match, right? So now he's going into stuff like Ancient Fairy. He drew the triple invocation, kind of Sag, but not the worst thing in the world when you're playing Invoked. And by keeping the invocation in his hand, now we know he has at the very least a, a monster negate and one more negate. Um, on top of a crystal wing, so that's at the very least two monster negates. That's just three three interruptions. Unfortunately, there's not much else there. Uh, so Mechaba's gonna negate one. And I knew like if I like if you let Layer of Darkness stay on the field, I could just uh, like he knew I could just summon an Infernoid and just like scam him out of one of his monsters. So he negated it to make sure that wasn't the case. And now that I knew Alistair was the last card in his hand, we just got the free Void Imagination. Went into TR. He got Crystal Wing, which is fine. Because we got... We, 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 we have the Anuku. And then now we're able to go Snake Eyes combo. Because we had original Simple Spoils. Now, again, I'm not playing the Bish Balkan build. So this is going to be a kind of like... Low to the ground kind of build. Uh, kind of board. We're stacking up Infernoids in our graveyard. We SP Little Knight away the, um... The Crystal Wing, and I kind of forgot I couldn't attack directly. So, I went into Equimax to max out my damage output, uh, to, to like, make sure, like, I could swing into, um, some big... Like, swing for big damage. And then use the uh, Atondel Tribute Equimax to kind of like attack for game. But then I realized, like, wait a minute, I actually cannot attack directly. Um, which is fine. I mean, he would have had 100 life points left anyway. And I was telling myself, dude, I, I, I could have calc that better. I definitely could have. But it's all right. He's on no cards in hand. We have Atondel. We have the, the follow-up on Nunku. And then we have the follow-up Simple Spoils to search another um, De Decatron, so. Infernoids are a very fun deck. Um, I think the deck has potential. So yeah, let me know what, what you guys think about uh, Infernoids in the comment section below. Uh, this is a guy that's more of just for the, for right now, clearly um, come February, the deck is gonna be completely different. Uh, well, not completely different. Uh, come, come February, we're gonna get the Snake Eye Populous. Um, then, and then come me, and we're also gonna get per per Promethean Princess. Uh, come January, we get Flame Tongue, I believe. So we're, we're, like, there's gonna be a, there's a lot of fire support this year, and come next year, there's gonna be even more fire support, Promethean Princess being, like, the, one of the best ones. Um, because it, it allows you, it, it really rewards you for playing, like, pure fire. Um, compared to maybe so, some other decks, but yeah. Um, I think uh, Sna we we still have to see how well Infernoid is going to be doing in the OCG. Like the set just came out, the the Terminal World set just came out in OCG like last last Saturday or or, or last Friday. And it's like we 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 only saw the one Infernoid that look that grass looks greener deck top, 
So it'll take a little more time before maybe more OCG players lean into Infernoid Snake Eyes and what the deck can do. I also saw someone using the Adventure Engine in this deck, and um, as much as I like don't disagree, I would say just be very careful using the Adventure Engine in this deck, only because it's great if you open the wanted stuff, but if you don't open the wanted stuff, like what are you doing? Because you cannot get Excel's effect, you cannot get Decatron's effect on Normal Summon. I don't know how you would play with the Adventure Package if you're not opening wanted. Whereas at least with um, Excel, like you could somewhat scam out, you know, um, a few more, few more Infernoid monsters and, and such, and, um, and yeah. Uh, there were a few other tech cards that I think you you, you could play, I guess, but, but before I click, cut the video, because I because I, I kind of want to make sure I mention these at least. You can make Ultimaya um, very easily with like Shooting Riser, or it, it, I think it's easier with Shooting Riser if you want to make uh, Ultimaya because um, it can make itself level five or level six. So that's why I play Sajet and Piotti because um, to make Shooting Riser, it's like when you summon Oak, you summon Decatron, then you mill level five, and that makes him level six. So six plus one is seven, and so. Um, on his summon, you can mill some like Entra, someone that you're not going to use during your turn, unless you, even if you hard opened it, you're not using Entra, <laughs> um, 90% of the time. And so you, you mill this now. Both the Piotti and the Shooting Riser are both level five, and you can make a Ultimaya. Ultimaya can then, like, if, if 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 like this deck had more Searchers for spells and traps, then maybe Ultimaya would be better. But if you have another like Imperm or something, then you can set. Uh, set the Imperm Summon Crystal Wing, which is kind of cool. Uh, Burst Griffin, I think, is a little underrated um, because it's another card that can revive Decatron on Summon, but I also think it doesn't do a lot for the deck as uh, by itself. Like, it could summon Decatron and then, like, revive the Decatron like, it, it can revive the Decatron and then Synchro Summon itself again. And then, um, during your next standby phase, it can summon back any monster from your graveyard. So, you would have to play two copies of it for that to be useful, or for, for that play to be, uh, possible. Um, Sunlight Wolf, I think, could be cool if you want to, like, recycle your, like, Ash or your Oak, and you... Or yeah, if if you want to recycle Oak, I think this this is a good card to uh to play in your deck. I just think um you just banish too many monsters for this to be useful. Also, not being able to summon the monster that you add back to hand the same turn kind of kind of hurts sometimes. Um, extra foolish burial that that was more something I was dairy crafting for when the new stuff comes out, and I, I won't be t talking over the new stuff much in this video. I'll be waiting for uh the. The terminal world to, to come out and then we'll you know reassess what else infernoid could use uh solomon great charge it shuffles your fire monsters back into the deck which is cool but um it can also pop cards on field so it's it, it's kind of like cool that you have the option but i just wish that uh it was more putting them back into grave like burial um which would have been a lot better in my opinion but that's why that's why we have fire recovery you know we we kind of don't need the saw my great charge ultimate slayer could be a good card because i think um especially if you're going second you you play every extra deck type so like there 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 should be very little that you can't play through if you're playing ultimate slayer um and i can't think of like especially like some of these more later like cards right like these are all the ones that you'd want to mill so like uh you know, you can get rid of like Baron or, um, or something like that. You can get rid of some problematic fusions, like you know, some tier limit fusions or Chimera fusions. You can get rid of Link monsters, like for for like Unchained, and you can kind of like get benefits by doing it. And because this shuffles back into deck, it gets rid of Mirror Jade without Mirror Jade triggering, and then you could like Entis pop something else, or you can Garura draw. 
Uh, Burial, it's at three. It's still a good card. I just think um, it's just not relevant enough at the moment to be played because most times you're going to be focusing more on your Snake Eye engine going first than you are on your Infernoid engine. But if you can, if, if, if you open this going second and you resolve Void Imagination, this is one of the best cards for follow-up because it doesn't matter if Deviati or Anunkun get, get negated because you can just summon it right back if you have Burial. Um, and none of the, bo both Anunku and Deviati are not hard once per turn. It's like, if you can summon it again, you just summon it again. Reasoning is, is at one, and I know like we're playing less Inferno names now than maybe like decks back in the day used to. So I don't think it's good like right now, right now, but maybe when the new stuff comes out, this could be really good. Uh, Lava Golem is more for breaking boards. You don't need your normal summon if you can resolve imagination, if I'm being honest. Um, also, you can just go from, if you open the Snake Eye Engine, you can just go, go straight into Decatron without using your normal summon. So that's why I think Lava Golem is a potential good um, card to use for this deck. Uh, books to protect Tierra, or, uh, yeah, Tierra, or, I think, like, I, I don't want to say Decatron, because you can still mill with Decatron. Um, I, I guess, yeah, to, to protect Tierra, to make sure that Tierra can, can, can resolve, or to break down boards. It's, it's like, Book of Moon kind of is, like, two, two cards in one. It can help you break down a board, and it can help you protect yourself from, like, Veiler Imperm kind of interruptions. It can also, um, get rid of cards like, uh, Wave King Caesar. Put that face down. This effect is no longer useful. Um, we can play around some Unchained cards. So I still use this even in my, uh, Rescue Ace, because I think it's a good card, so that's why I'll, I kind of just kept it inside here. Super Poly might be one of the better cards I have here, because depending on, on the deck you're facing, it could either be really relevant or really not relevant at all. Um, but if, if it's mixed with a layer of darkness, Garua and uh, Mud Dragon that Swamp can be very effective um, targets. And so, like, if you mix it with layer of darkness, you never need to play something like some random fusion for, like, a particular type. Like, Mud Dragon and Garua will always be able to be summoned off of Super Poly. And half the times that you discard, it's like you kind of don't need the card that you discarded anyway because you're playing Infernoid. Like, you don't need, like, a new, like any of the Infernoid monsters in hand except for Decatron. So, it's it's really fine if you need to discard for this. Uh, there, there's the third friend of mine. There's Kurikara. Kurikara can be searched by the secondary effect of Simple, of simple Swole's Snake Eye. If it's in, if it's still in Graveyard, turn three, um, and you just need a level one fire monster to search to help you break a board, Kurikara could be it. Or if you, um, if you already have a Decatron, in hand, when you go for Snake Eye Ash, you can search Curry Car instead and kind of like uh, break your opponent's board down that way too. So it's a kind of cool card. Uh, maybe I I'm, I'm not too sure like what matchups it wins against. Like I know Kashira is still around, but um, I'm not too sure what else it does really well against. Maybe Pearly if they use their Nor. And maybe it can play around like a SP Little Knight if they IP'd it during your turn. It can play around a, a few other cards like that, but the, it, it's 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 getting harder to use Curry Car at the moment, which is why it's seeing a lot less play. Um, so you you kind of have to like know the matchup and know when you're going to use this card. So I think it's better kept in the side deck. There goes another Fire Recovery, Bish, and Mud Dragon. Okay, and that's really all for now. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think about uh, Infernoids at the moment. And uh, I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.